Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to tomorrow. So Orbital ATK has been making a lot of progress towards being able to continue cargo missions to the International Space Station. And that's what I wanted to talk about today for this, your space pod for August 18th, 2015. So first off, an enhanced Cygnus cargo vessel has arrived at Cape Canaveral in preparation for Orbital ATK's next cargo mission in December to the International Space Station. It's enhanced because the cargo module is actually larger, making it capable of delivering 3,000 pounds of cargo more than before, for a total of 8,000 pounds in all. This enhanced Cygnus also features new Ultraflex solar panels on its service module, which will arrive at the Cape in October for inspection and integration with the cargo module. This mission, the fourth commercial resupply services mission for Orbital ATK, will be launching this December on an Atlas V rocket, and the Atlas V will be in the 401 configuration, which means a 4 meter fairing, no solid rocket boosters, and a single engine Centaur upper stage. Amid all of this, Orbital ATK has announced that they've purchased a second Atlas V rocket, with the option to purchase more, due to the Antares rocket not being ready to return to flight, and the Wallops Island and spaceports, the repairs to that are still yet to be completed after the explosion last October when Orbital ATK attempted their third mission. Even though the official cause of that accident has yet to be released, Orbital ATK has been blaming the engines for that explosion, the Aerojet 26 engines, which are a refurbished version of the vintage NK-33 Russian engines that were used on the Russian moon rocket. And Orbital ATK is moving forward with replacing those engines on a new Antares configuration, the Antares 200. They would replace the Aerojet 26 engines with Russian-made R. RD-181, a single nozzle derivative of the RD-180, the twin nozzle version that is being used on the Atlas V right now. The Antares 200 would actually use two RD-181s on every launch, making it about 100,000 pounds of thrust more powerful than the Antares 100 configuration. However, I'm wondering, why not just use the RD-180 engine? It's about 30,000 pounds of thrust more powerful than using two RD-181 engines, and it seems like it would be simpler. But considering the availability concerns over the RD-180 engine, I guess it makes the most sense to use this, this sort of engine without having to develop a brand new engine here in the United States. Several test firings of the RD-181 engines have already successfully occurred, and flight-ready models of those engines have already started to be integrated into a new Antares core stage, so they're moving ahead with that. However, there's not really any timetable so far. Orbital ATK is hoping for an early 2016 for a return to flight of this new stage, but they, I'm sure, want to be very careful with these new engines and making sure they don't have another accident like they did last time. Meanwhile, an agreement has been reached between NASA, the state of Virginia, and Orbital ATK as to who should be financially responsible for the $15 million repair of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, since there was no insurance when that accident occurred last year. And they have agreed to share the costs equally, and repairs are moving forward and should actually be complete by September, possibly early October of this year. So they'll be ready to do hot fire tests and launching the Antarctic rocket from there whenever Orbital ATK is ready to launch the rocket again. So that is very, very awesome. I would love to know what you guys think about this and all the different progress that Orbital ATK has made and these sort of backup plans using the Atlas V rocket in order to continue flights right away so that the ISS is, gets all of the cargo that they need to be able to continue operations without any hiccups or any problems. So very cool. Thank you so much to everyone who's been donating to our Patreon campaign and enabling us to make space news like this. And if you're willing and able, please consider donating at patreon.com slash spacepod so that we can keep doing this and having a great time. So thank you so much to everybody. And thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know a little bit more today than you did yesterday, thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.